with all my doctor's appointments yesterday and running around all the way to Winkler and back. Took up most of the day. I didn't have a chance to pull this thing out during the day and give it a bath. So hopefully today, I'm kind of hoping that my truck, 3006, got into the shop yesterday and that it'll be ready to go today, but I'm pretty sure it'll be in there a couple of days because there's a few things they need to replace. It's getting a safety done, which is something that has to be done every year on our trucks to make sure that it's legally safe to be rolling down the highway. When you buy a new personal vehicle, you've only got to do that once, right? At least here in Manitoba. You only have to do that once when you buy the vehicle. On commercial trucks, you've got to do that every single year. And it's quite a big process now, too. It's, uh, it takes a full day for the most part. Unless, I mean, you're really good at it, I guess. But it's in the shop. Back at work right now, getting that done. There's a few things they need to replace. So on top of the safety that needs to be done, they've also got to take the time to replace the parts that need to be replaced. That makes sense, right? I really like the engines. It's a Detroit engine. Inside these Western Stars, Detroit Powerhouse, they're very good, reliable engines, as are all engines nowadays. Like I always say, every manufacturer is equally great, but uh, they all have their strengths, right? Uh, my dad had a Freightliner FLD, a 97, back in the day when I was a kid. That thing had a Detroit powerhouse in there, and that thing went forever. And now the truck that he has now has a Caterpillar engine in it, and that thing goes forever. But Caterpillar doesn't make highway tractor engines anymore for some reason. That's very disappointing. I really like the Cat engines, but now you got Detroit, you got Cummins, you got Packar. Is there any others that I'm missing? I apologize if I'm missing them. I'm not doing that on purpose. But... On these trucks, you can't see if the washer fluid basin is full or not. It's underneath there. This is the spot where you fill it up. So you just sort of got to fill it up until it reaches the top. At least it's got a nice big opening here and it's easy to pour into. Some trucks, they uh, install these, not, or these openings in an impossible place to get to with a full jug. Oh, I can hear it coming near the top already. Oh, oh, there it is, there it is. Okay, that's the top. Got a little bit left yet. Almost made the whole thing. And this is uh, winter. The blue stuff is always for winter. You never want to put the pink stuff or any other stuff in your truck in the wintertime because it'll freeze up. And it won't necessarily damage it or damage anything, but it'll be a headache. You're going to have to park it in a warm shop like this to let all of the lines defrost, or maybe you can get uh, antifreeze through the system. It's just an extra little headache that you'd want to avoid. Just put winter washer fluid in in the winter time. It's pretty straightforward. This truck has the marker lights along the side of the sleeper here too. I like that. It uh, When you're driving down the highway at night, it lights up the road beside you. It gives you that extra little bit of visibility when you want to make a lane change. And it also looks a lot better. Do you remember that tight spot we got into last week? We could barely make it in through the gate and we had to back out and could just barely make it out. Headed back there again. I have an empty step deck behind me, 53 foot triaxle. I don't think I need the triaxle, but we got it anyway, just in case. It was the only empty trailer I could find in the yard. And they said, go for it, pull it on in. So here we are. See what they have for us today. I'm not sure if I'm delivering this load or not. Uh, all I know right now is I'm picking it up. <laughs> need to know basis, and all I need to know is go pick it up, bring it back. Still in the Western Star today. Uh, 3006 is not in the shop yet, but it's on the board for tomorrow. So, in the meantime, I've got a nice star to roll around in. Hopefully we get the peat back soon. And we've arrived to the fun part of our journey. <laughs> this is really the most narrow street I ever drive down. That's why I show it all the time. I don't go that far into the, the heart of the city. You can't really with a 75 foot unit. It's, it just doesn't work. In the heart of the city is usually where you send a five ton box truck or something. 
but I'm still able to access this area. This is uh, Elmwood in Winnipeg on the east side. Actually, when my parents were young and first married, I believe they lived in this neighborhood somewhere. They got married in uh, 1975. They've been married a long time. Freak that van out a little bit there. Just perfect. See, it's just a perfect fit. It's like it was meant just for me. They still haven't widened the streets. Like all of this snow cuts out about a foot of each lane on both sides. So it's very narrow. You gotta rub up right against the snowbank to get past these bigger vehicles. You see, this is a big school bus here. Oh, and they've got a stop. The city really should be clearing these streets properly so that we can get through here. So the bus didn't really have to stop there. We could pass each other, but there's only like a couple of inches between our mirrors then, right? So you gotta slow right down. Make sure you don't give them a high five with your mirror, you know, you don't wanna do that. It scares the daylights out of people. Makes a big bang. And then you gotta go and fix things. You gotta watch out for people swinging their doors open into traffic there too, apparently, without looking. Uh, just another day trucking, right? You gotta watch out for everyone else on the road. I trust myself. I don't trust anyone else. <laughs> There's a good driver. See, most people got common sense. They'll make room for you. You just gotta watch out for those few out there that aren't paying attention and are a little bit oblivious to the fact that you're a big truck and you need a lot of space. Driving a truck in the city, you've gotta be what I call politely aggressive. You know, if you don't get a little bit aggressive, people are never gonna make room for you. They're never gonna let you in. You gotta be a little bit assertive. Maybe that's a better word than aggressive. But you gotta be polite about it, all right? We are professional drivers. That means that we're not only professional in the way we drive, we're professional in our attitude. We're supposed to be anyway. You have to have a professional attitude. When someone gets all mad at you, you don't fire back at them and lose your temper back at them. You stay calm and professional and try your best to, uh, hmm? to do your best. Try your best to do your best in all things. And just stay calm. That's the hardest part, I agree. I'm not always great at that either. But it's something I work on every day. We're not going in there, but there is our entrance right over there. Hopefully there's nobody in there right now. Find out once we get a little closer. Pull myself as far this way as I can without getting stuck. Yeah, there's nobody there. There's nobody there, okay. Now I'm gonna, I might have to do a three point turn here because I'm gonna try to make it extra wide and I know I'm not gonna make it in this try. But that's on purpose. You see, I can turn like this and then I back up and I jack knife her a little bit. And there's a car back there, hope they're paying attention. And pull her in just past, past that post there hug these vehicles over here give them a nice little good morning hello but don't hit them and there you go made it in no problem so one of these loads is mine here Pull right up to these here. There we go. All right, gotta tell the government, yes, I am here now. I send a message back to work telling them I am here now so that everybody and their dog knows that I am here now. There we go, no excuse, everybody knows where I am. 
you have 12 hours and 25 minutes of remaining drive time. Thank you, random voice. I appreciate your help. I didn't ask for it, though. Don't you just hate it when people just start talking to you when you don't, when you don't want to talk to them? Out of my GPS. I don't even bring her along unless I'm going like on a longer trip. I call her Karen. She always tries to boss me around, thinks she knows everything. Always talks to me without me talking to her. Like, I don't want to talk to you, Karen. Just... Video and let me know it. All right, well, I'm all ready for the shipper. I'm gonna go in there, ring the bell, and uh, see what he's got for me. It's a beautiful day out. It's gonna be really nice. That's what it looks like if you're wondering what an empty step deck looks like. I mean, it's a step deck. We call it a step deck because it's a deck and it has a, a step. Therefore, you know it's a step deck by the way it is. There we go. Again, this is freight that you can't tie down too tight. You gotta be careful with your straps. Straps could damage the freight. See, they got wood frames on the top of those on the front, but for some reason on these bigger ones on the back, they don't, so you gotta be gentle but firm. We're ready to go. All right, buckle ourselves in so we don't fall out. Let's back out of here. We got Mr. Garbage Man here wanting to grab his bin. And I am in his way committing the ultimate sin. Never block the garbage man's garbage bin. They really don't like that. <laughs> I'm gonna back out of here now without hitting anything. There you go, bud. Free and clear for your garbage bin. Do what you wish with her. close to that post right there and then cut her hard cut her hard okay just like that you don't want to hit the post on this side okay there we go back and on back down okay careful there okay Sorry if I'm giving you guys a bit of motion sickness here. There's a a lot to a lot to watch out for on my end. At the same time, you don't want a jackknife. Okay. There we go. Lock up the diffs here for a second. A bit more traction. There we go. Unlock them. Beautiful. Nice truck this guy's got here. That is beautiful. You're good, bud. You're good. Wonderful. Now he's going to go do that same thing, except with a much nicer truck. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. These trucks are very nice. Very nice. I'm not even joking, I really like these Western Stars. I just, everybody likes a long-nosed Pete, come on. 
Can't blame me for that. Don't look at me that way. One day, one day I'll have a truck like that and I'm gonna keep her nice and shiny and polished. You'll know it's me when I'm coming because you're gonna have to put your shades on. It's gonna be shining so bright. You'll see. Nobody coming. Nobody coming. Deep do, boo, deep deep dippy do. Fuel, dollar sixty five nine, a dollar sixty six a liter. That's the most expensive I've ever seen it in Manitoba. And yes, I already see all your comments. Okay, I hear them coming in. Your keyboards are on fire. I, r I realize that uh, gas prices are higher in other parts of the country and the world. I understand, but that is high for my region. Dollar sixty five. So I'm moving into a different truck. Moving into that truck, which is exactly the same as this truck, except that one is 3088. And that one has a headache rack, half fenders, and beacons. I wanna see if uh, the keys are in it. This'll be handy. That'll be really handy. Is this unlocked? No, it's locked. That's good, it's supposed to be locked. How's the front end look? Yeah. Looks exactly like the other front end. Let's see if we can get a better look at this, eh? <laughs> Got the key. We see that it's plugged in. That's good. Let's see. Oh, we're gonna. Oh, that's tight. That is. Oh, it's probably just as tight. Yikes. I'm serious about keeping that hood down. Wow. Okay, so exact same setup. As the other one, Detroit engine. Our coolant is good. I'm gonna make sure the uh, washer fluid is good in a minute. Put you down here. I don't have gloves on again, I know. I didn't learn from this morning. Plenty of oil. All right. Okay, so exactly the same situation. Except this one has a uh, different color of mattress. Cool. Let's uh, start her up. Let her cycle through. Turn the radio off. Oh, this one doesn't have fuel. Now I gotta fuel this one too. That's okay. So this truck is almost exactly identical to that last one we were in. The only difference I can really point out is that the blinkers on the dashboard, it's an outline of an arrow that lights up instead of the whole arrow. <laughs> Other than that, it's exactly the same except this is a deck truck, which means it's uh, got a headache rack on the back and it's designed to pull flatbeds. We're bobtailing right now. We got to go down to the US border at the scale there. One of our trailers is there. I got to go recover it. And that's why I needed the beacons because it's a wide load. So this is the truck I'll be using now until 3006 is out of the shop. Nice Pete. Very nice. Oh, there's another nice Pete at the end here. Oh, it's our lucky day. Nice. I just like looking at them. Beautiful, isn't it? Hey, and you know it's springtime. Look at this, they got dry pavement. Looks like they scraped all that packed snow off the ground here. Huh. All right, I gotta fuel this bad boy up. I fueled the other one up so it's ready for the next driver, but now this one needs fuel. Somebody parked it without fueling it. Not very nice, but that's okay. I'll, uh, I'll deal with that, I'll fix it. The US border is right there. And this is the scale coming into Manitoba. This is where our trailer is, apparently. I don't know what happened, but uh, I'm here to recover it. 
I can get going on this ice. There we go. Let's see what we're dealing with. The scale's closed, so it's a good thing. We shouldn't have uh, DOT officers coming sniffing around seeing what I'm doing. Again, got nothing to hide, but you know, it takes time. You know, they come out there, they say hi, before you know it, you're getting a, an inspection. And that takes up part of my afternoon and I'd rather uh, head back and go home than spend my time getting inspected. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'm alone in not liking that. Oh, there's our trailer right there. I see it. It's another uh, double T, except this one isn't on a, on that T-frame thing like mine was the other day. This one's different. Okay, okay. I see. Here's my load. Let's see. So I was told they left the chains on it, but I'm gonna need to use my own binders. And that's true. Okay, yeah, so there's no T-frame on this one. Chains are in place. Okay. Gonna have to put signs on it and stuff because it's a wide load. All right, we're here to recover that. Let's do some recovery work, shall we? So I've got everything binded and chained, chained and binded. I'm just setting up my flags on the four corners. You gotta get a little creative with these loads sometimes, how you get your flag right at the corner. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do this one yet, but uh, huh. Let's do the front on the other side because I can do that the same way I did the other side there. That one was a little easier. I'm gonna have to loop around here, something like that. And I gotta put my oversized load signs or my D signs. D signs are legal to use here. Uh, oversized load signs the ones that say oversized load the words the yellow background they're illegal all across the united states are the only thing that's legal there in canada they are illegal every i mean they're legal to use everywhere in canada except for quebec that's because quebec's first language is french actually their only language is french they're the only province of canada that is not bilingual legally they didn't sign the bilingual act uh that's a story for another vlog okay <laughs> Yeah, there's some opinions on that on all sides, but anyway, they speak French there. So if you have a sign that says oversized load, obviously it's not in French, so it's illegal to use in Quebec. So in Quebec, you have to use the D sign because D stands for danger. And in French, it also stands for le danger. They both use D or danger. Danger. I don't know how to say danger in French. Le danger. So uh, you have to use your D signs. Those are the only ones you're allowed to use in Quebec. Everywhere else you can use the oversized load signs. But that's just because uh, it has to be in the French language if it's going to be displayed, right? So they just stick with just the D signs. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm, I know I'm poking at them a little bit here. It's all in friendly fun. They are our brothers and sisters out there. Uh, may speak a different language, but that does not make them any different or any less Canadian. We love Quebec. I love Quebec. It's a beautiful, beautiful province. If you ever want to go and visit Quebec, I highly recommend it. It is a beautiful, beautiful place to go see. And there you go. So you get a little creative. There's your flag. Right at the front there. So I'm going to figure out something like that to do on the back end as well. And, uh, and then I just got to put my signs on front and back. And we can roll out of here. Load recovered. I'm the recovery man today. Recovery man, Josh. Okay, let's put our signs up. We got a cattle hauler pulled in on the other side of that trailer. Stinks. Though the farmers would say it smells like money. I uh, I disagree. <laughs> Okay, let's get this loaded up on here. Da -da, get this sign up so you can see how I see. 
Got a little creative. Two bungees down to there. Holds the flag right at the corner of the wide load. Okay, and now we're gonna put this up and over here like this for now. Uh, just to hold it in place. Come on, come on, I just need one of you. I just need one of you. Okay, just to lightly hold this in place, we're just gonna, no, oh, tack it on there for now. Take a couple of these. These are getting all messed up anyway. Let's see if we can. Get this thing up here as well. I'm gonna want it to go over there. Alright, like that. Okay, a little bit tighter. Okay, that'll just hold it there for now. Okay. So every time you see one of these loads, the oversized loads with all the signs and flags and everything, and you're not a truck driver, now you know that the effort the truck driver goes through to make everything look nice. And if it looks all symmetrical and nice and pretty, it's because that driver really cares about his job and takes pride in him. Takes pride in his work. I try to make mine look pretty all the time. It's not always easy. Oops, sorry guys. This one here. Okay. We're gonna want it to go over that there and then down to this here just to hold that in there nice and tight. There we go. Okay. So now that's the top is being held in, bottom is being held in there. Need this bungee here just to hold this corner in. Straight down here and around to there. Okay. Now that sign mm, needs a little bit of help, yet, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I like it to be uh, firm. I don't want them going anywhere. Be careful with these uh, bungees, they can snap back at you. They're not always your friends. There we go. That's not straight yet, is it? Oh, that top one there is pretty firm in there. 